Welcome back. I've got a review for the Severn release of Jack the Ripper, 1959 British film directed by Monty Berman and Robert Baker, who most notably did Blood of the Vampire and the Trollenberg Terror. Uh, the film was produced by Mid Century, which was a small outfit that, uh, as I said, they did Trollenberg Terror and Blood of the Vampire and, and a number of other non-horror titles in Britain in the mid-50s, late 50s. They never really went far beyond after making this film. The The interesting thing about this film is it was the script was written by Jimmy Sangster, who of course was at his high point, his peak, back in 1959. He had already done Hammer's Curse of Frankenstein, Horror of Dracula, and then he did the script for Jack the Ripper. So he he was really at the top of his game when he did the script for Jack the Ripper. Uh, this film was victimized, if you will, by the British censors. And British censorship, of course, we know all know about the Video Nasty um, act that came out. Back in the 50s, though, they were just as, just as strict and really they kind of emaciated this film i mean eviscerated emaciated whatever you want to, whatever you want to whatever adjective you want to describe they really kept any kind of scenes of violence and nudity completely muted i mean um, when you watch this film and then you then you look at the, what they call the continental cut which includes some brief french it's the french version that has uh, nudity and I guess to the extent you could call it some violence. I mean, it's even that, even that cut though is so tame, so tame in today's eyes. It's it's amazing how how muted the British censors were even back in the fifties. I guess I guess, I'm surprised. You know, when you look at this film and it compare what we got from the Hammer films, it's, it's shocking how how they penalize certain films and let others go. Nonetheless, the film is interesting. Uh, it's based on, loosely based on, uh, a guy named Mather, Matthew, I believe, who wrote a novel about Jack the Ripper. And the, 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 most, common, the most common theory was that Jack the Ripper was a doctor. And that's, what the, that's the storyline of the movie based on the book, is that you've got a physician that's... Um, for whatever reason, is killing off prostitutes in Whitechapel back in 1880s. Uh, so the film very much follows that narrative very closely. It's an engaging storyline. It's it's very talky, uh, and and as far as payoff violence, you don't really have a whole lot. Um, and again, I blame the censors for that. But it's still an engaging story, very atmospheric. And really, a, a slice of cinema from the 1950s British cinema that I think is. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad this got released because this this was something that, um, you know, if you didn't pick this up, I feel bad for you because it's it's really a slice of cinematic history that that needs more viewings. Severn. This is a Severn release, and it was limited. I just checked the website, and it's out of print. So, I mean, if you want it, you. You're probably gonna have to pay a pretty penny on eBay. It did come with the slip cover. And then you've got, it's a Blu-ray DVD. You've got three copies of the film. You've got the British release, the US release, and then on the DVD, you've got the, what they call the continental version, the French version, which has uh, brief nudity. Um, and, and really, I, I, it was like 10, there, you can watch, the continental cut excerpts of the continental cut the differences in the films on the blu-ray and it's about 10 minutes of footage that's um i mean it's very it's tame it's 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 unbelievable um that they just i mean really the, from a violence the only thing that really was on there the bottom line is the only difference between the continental cut the british cut the u.s cut is some boobs I mean, you get you get a lot of you get to look at a lot of boobs. That's it. I didn't see I didn't really see any difference in terms of violence on it. Um, 
the ending of this film is really interesting, and it's got and, it, and it's got a shocking, really payoff ending with a brief color moment. And a lot of films, there was a, not a lot, but a number of films back in forties and fifties would use the black and white gothic look, and then try to shock you with one brief moment of color. I, I think um, and it, the one that comes readily to mind is uh, the Amazing Colossal Man. You know where he grabs the the wires at the end and it and it electrocutes them and it's all it's all color. That may have been the amazing War of the Colossal Beast. I can't remember which one. Maybe that was War of the Colossal Beast. But anyway, that that had a, a brief color ending as well. The ending is a definite payoff. I give this film a seven out of ten. Here's the reverse artwork. Yeah, I'm glad I picked this up. It's a uh, it's a nice piece of cinematic, British cinematic history that uh, would really have been forgotten had Severn not picked this thing up. As far as special features, there's quite a few. You've got an audio commentary with Marcus Hearn and Jimmy Sangster. You also have a 13 minute, uh, I guess it's a little docudrama about the real Jack the Ripper now that's an interesting story as well because everybody of course wants to get closure and get resolution on these kind of mysterious killings and something as brutal as the Jack the Ripper killings have always attracted people's imagination uh, what I would tell you is there's a, there's a show that Discovery Channel had a very interesting Jack the Ripper solving Jack the Ripper uh, documentary. If you, if you, it, it, actually, I think I may have caught it on Netflix. But you can, you ought to check that out because it, it, it made the most persuasive case for a guy named Frederick Deming. Uh, and Frederick Deming was simply a psychopath. He was born in England. Uh, he was a flim-flam criminal, scam artist, and a psychopath. I mean, all in one. And he traveled a lot. He traveled between South America and England and. Uh, Africa and then Australia and they were able to pinpoint that he was always in London or they believe he was always in London about the time of the murders even throughout his travels so they, they went through his, the, the travel logs uh, they went back and researched where he lived and where he ultimately was hung in Australia there's a bust of his face in Australia and ironically enough in Scotland Yard um, and that bust was some accounts Jack the Ripper um, they made a very compelling argument that, that that Frederick Deming was Jack the Ripper and they even had DNA evidence which was shocking they had a shawl um, from one of the victims that they were able to grab some DNA DNA from it's, I mean, it's really interesting you gotta check it out if you get a chance um, so that that's a thir there's a 13 minute little retrospective on the real Jack the Ripper. Um, then you've got, um, as I said, the audio commentary track, alternate continental takes, um, and then interviews with uh, Dennis Dennis Merkel, author of Jack the Ripper: The Murders in the Movies. Then you've got a poster and theater, theatrical trailers. So yeah, this was this was a really interesting watch. Not a not a great compelling movie, but a but a, a really interesting one and one I would recommend if you if you get a chance to see this or pick up the Blu-ray on eBay, um, you ought to do that. I recommend it. I give it a seven out of ten. All right, that'll do it for my review of Severin's release of Jack the Ripper. Let me know if you got this release and what you thought about it. Thanks for watching.